in the midst of our Easter joy, we turn with the whole church today to contemplate the life of St. Mark the Evangelist. We do so with great gratitude because we owe to him one of the four Gospels, those four fountains from which we draw forth the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mark's Gospel is by far the shortest. And so in these days when many people are finding their plans canceled and large blocks of open time in their schedules, you might want to actually sit down and read the whole Gospel of Mark from beginning to end. It's totally doable in a single sitting. It's fitting that we honor Mark in these early days of the Easter season because his life can only be understood in light of the literal bodily resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Mark is believed to have been a close follower of Christ, one who was in fact with him that fateful Holy Thursday night in the Garden of Gethsemane. There is a detail about that night which only Mark's Gospel records. There was a young man with the band of disciples who was lightly clad, whom the guards attempted to seize along with Jesus. And the young man left his garment and fled away naked into the night. Tradition arose in the early church that this young man who lost his courage and his clothes was Mark. We see how the reality of the resurrection changes everything. Mark, like the apostles and the wider group of disciples, receives power from on high when he witnesses Jesus truly alive and then receives the Holy Spirit 50 days later at Pentecost. Mark would give abundant and faithful witness to Jesus, especially as a companion to St. Peter, the first bishop of Rome. The resurrection changes the meaning of that night in which Mark ran away. We can rightly assume that Mark learned from that experience to rely totally on the power of Jesus and to develop a healthy distrust of his own strength. In this, Mark and Peter uh, were close companions. Peter, too, uh, loved Christ and desired to be faithful, but relied on himself and so fell away that terrible night. And afterwards, he would come back and rely on God's grace. And God would provide all the strength needed. His grace is truly enough, as St. Paul would tell us. His power is made perfect in weakness. And so we hear from our first reading today, which references um, that Peter is writing with the company of Mark. And the first line um, almost has this little touch of humor as it um, makes us think back to that Holy Thursday night. It says, Beloved, clothe yourselves with humility and cast all your worries upon him because he cares for you. Mark would truly clothe himself in humility. He would rely totally upon God. And once a deep level of humility takes root in our lives, then great things can follow. We know that was the case with Mark. As we venerate the glory of St. Mark, may this humble saint obtain for us the grace to abide in the mystery of Christ crucified, for he is the power of God and the wisdom of God.